now something happened like it always happens and the normal regular habitual thing will try to pop up say hold on slow down i'm in charge because you have to be in charge of your life you have to be in charge of your action you have to be in charge of your new life and then you say christ i thank you because you live in me you abide in me look at my situation here christ if you were here how will you act how will you talk slow down if you don't slow down the old attitude old action old behavior will come up again but when you slow down and you ask the lord what should i do at this time how should i respond at this time what direction should i go at this time he that says he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk even as he walk your walk victoriously your life will take on a new approach, a new excitement, a new victory in Jesus' name. Number three here. In number three, we have the consistent leaning of believers on Christ. Look at the Galatians chapter 2, verse 21. I do not frustrate the grace of God. I do not frustrate the grace of God. Look up here. Let's say you have, you'll never be sick. I didn't hear your amen. amen. But for illustration, let's say you have sickness, and then somebody who loves you spoke to a doctor, and this doctor is the number one expert in the land sends him to you and he says i'd like to have this challenge i'm here to make you overcome the challenge and you neglect him you don't answer him how do you feel no answer what are you going through no answer set out your tongue let me see the condition on your tongue no response he'll be frustrated because he has the help he has the support he has the knowledge he can make you well in every way in every area of your life but you don't respond to him he will be frustrated until he has to leave now the grace of god is there with us all the time by grace he has saved by grace you are sanctified by grace you are strengthened by grace you are succored the grace of god is available to make you the newest kind of creature you can be and the most successful and righteous that you can be but the grace is frustrated because you never appeal to that grace you never ask for more grace you never depend on that grace you never lean on that grace it's frustrated that's why paul the apostle said by the grace of god i am what i am i go through that challenge the grace is there i come through that persecution the grace is there i come through that misunderstanding the grace of god is there i come through that problem the grace of god by the grace of god i am what i am and the grace of god that was given to me was not in vain because he did not frustrate the grace of god from today you will not frustrate the grace of god he says i do not frustrate the grace of god for if righteousness came by law then christ is dead in vain. what he's saying is i know that righteousness will not come by the law i was very familiar with the law i was very familiar with the law of moses but now i've abandoned that i've thrown away that because grace has come in place and i always rely on that grace of god and as we rely more from tonight on the grace of god your life will be victorious your life will be righteous and your life will take on a new beauty spiritually in jesus name grace amazing grace grace that is greater 
than all our sins and that grace available for you tonight you can come to the throne of grace and require help at the time of need and grace will become abundant in your life in my life in my life grace abundant in jesus name rise up and tell the lord and let that grace do its work in your life do not frustrate the grace of god the grace of god will see you through whatever you are going through the grace of god will perfect everything concerning you in jesus name that Lord as leaders and pastors you will visit us even in this prayer meeting touch our lives of God and turn us around let our lives not remain the way it has been Lord we pray you will increase us on every side thank you Lord for the answer in Jesus name we have prayed amen, amen. Uh, tonight we want to begin to give thanks to God and begin to worship him Come and hear all you that fear the Lord, and I will declare what he has done for my soul. I want to thank him. Tonight we have a different session. We'll pray for ourselves, we'll pray for others, we'll pray for the GCK at Obomo Show, and then we'll pray for Charlotte. We want to give thanks to God because at <laughs> that point tonight and prayer request, everything God is going to hear and God is going to intervene greatly. We are trusting the Lord tonight. He will hear us from, from heaven. He will hear our cry. He will hear our prayer. And He will literally intervene in our situation in Jesus' name. Let's begin to open our mouths. Let's begin to worship Him. Let's begin to exalt Him. Father, we are grateful to you. Spirit of the living God. We honor your name. We exalt your name. We bow and bend before thy throne of majesty. There is no God on earth that can be likened to you. There is no God on earth that can be compared with you. There is no God on earth that we can bring and bring in together. And then comparing with the God who created heaven and earth, you are greater, you are higher than all. Father, we honor you, we exalt you, we praise you, we uplift you, we elevate you, and we adore you. We worship you from the depths of our heart. We say you are good. You have no comparison. You are not to be compared with any man. You are not to be compared with any power. You are not to be compared with any personality. You are not to be compared with anyone, O oh God. Father, we worship you. We exalt you for our lives. We honor you for our lives. We praise you for our lives. We lift your name for our children. We thank you, Lord God, for everything you are literally doing. Thank you for the ministry, the privilege of being called into the ministry, the privilege of being given, the privilege of being given the man to lead God's people. We are grateful. We are grateful. Oh God, we are grateful. The Bible says in First Corinthians, ye see your calling, brethren, how the mighty are not called. Hey, how the mighty are not called. And we are categorically told that God has chosen the foolish things of this life that he may confound the mighty things. So we are giving thanks to God for our calling. We are giving thanks to God for the privilege of knowing him. The service today, in the study scripture, we saw the day of atonement, and we saw what the priest in the Old Testament, including the high priest, Aaron, what they were doing. In fact, we saw the difference between the general sacrifices and the day of atonement. And we saw that it was only once the high priest 
entered into the Holy of Holy, and that's once in a year. But today, we have the privilege of coming to the Holy of Holies. We have the privilege of getting access to God, to heaven. Look at it. Today now, this night, we are praying. In the morning, we will stay praying. And every now and then, we always come together on our home. We have our quiet time this morning. And we pray. We pray in the church. At every time, we pray. So it's an unlimited asset. What a better covenant we have. That there is no middle wall of partition between us and God. Let's give thanks to God. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Yes, thank you, Fermi. Amen. In name, we pray. Amen. A Sunday prayer meeting is a pastor prayer meeting. It's a prayer meeting dedicated for the leaders of this platform. And as such, the manner of the prayer ought to be different and should be totally different, just like when we go for leadership meeting or any other meeting that are meant strictly for leaders. And you see the start of this message or messages during leaders meeting or any leaders uh, forum, and then compared to the general retreat. Now, so also, our prayer on Sunday, the model, the style, should be totally different from the general prayer. If the leader is sick spiritually, it has a way of affecting the members. If the leader is not strong and is weak, it has a way of affecting the people who is leading. If the, 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 the leader is captured spiritually and is prayerless and cold and locum and lethargic, it has a way of infiltrating into the life of the people that leader is leading. And that's why tonight we want to go before God. In the name of the Lord Jesus, first and foremost, we are going to pray that God will strengthen as many who are getting wicked, as many who are getting tired, as many of our pastors and leaders who are getting tired, tired in any way, tired of ministry as a result of challenges of life, tired of whatever they are tired of, that the monarch of Zion, God in heaven, we come to their rescue, stand by them, defend them, and bring an end to all of those things, bringing tiredness into their lives. Shall we pray? It's a time of intercessory now. It's a time of intercessory. And I believe there are those online praying. I believe we have our pastors on the platform praying, maybe connected via other medium or via other uh, line. Let's pray and tell the Lord, those who are tired, those who are weakened, those who are going through some unpalatable experiences, that God will come through for them. God will stand by them. God will defend them. God will give them victory over whatever they are going through. In the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's talk to God in prayer. In the name of Jesus. The scripture talks about those that are strong show restore. In Galatians, I'm reading. In Galatians, I read chapter 6. Galatians, chapter 6, in verse 1. If a brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye we as which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted, lest thou also be tempted. Bear ye one another's body, and so fulfill the law of Christ. Bear ye one another's body, and so fulfill the laws of the, the laws of Christ. And that's exactly what we are doing. So our pastors may be going through things, and of course we know that some are certainly constraints. 
God will counsel for them. God will stand by them in the name of Jesus Christ. The scripture reveals to us there that we are to bear one another's body. And so we can do that right away. We can bear one another's body. We can stand in the gap. We can ask God to intervene in the life of our pastors and leaders. Yes, all our pastors. We don't need to mention name now, but whatever is their challenge, financially, whatever is their challenge, spiritually, whatever is their challenge, ministerially, whatever is their challenge, matrimonially, maritally, whatever is their challenge, oh God, children, wife, whatever is their challenge, let the Lord come through for them. Let the Lord intervene in their situation. Please, are we praying? I can't hear anybody praying out. Let's talk to God in prayer. Let's talk to God in prayer that God will come through for them. God will intervene in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray and talk to God in prayer. We are praying for them in Jesus' name. Amen. We are going to pray for those who are having one ailment or the other. Sick. As many of our pastors who are sick, spiritually sick, physically sick, emotionally sick, maritally sick. We want to pray God will heal them. Part of the scripture that we read this morning during the Sunday service in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 4, the scripture says he has borne our grief and carried our sorrow. The Lord Jesus has borne the grief of his people. We want to pray that the grief that our pastors and leaders are going through, God should take away those grief and sorrow completely. Is this sorrow being brought about by a marital issue? Is it grief and sorrow being brought about by financial issue? Is it grief and sorrow being brought about by physical issue? Whatever is the issue, whatever is the challenge, that the monarch of Zion, the God of heaven, the Yahweh, come to the intervention of the people and heal them totally. All our pastor, everyone without exception, will be totally healed. Healed in one area or the other, where they need healing. Heal every aspect they need healing. Heal every aspect they need healing. Please, are we praying? Are you talking to God in prayer? That God will heal, that God will deliver, and God will intervene. Shall we pray? In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Amen. We are going to pray right now. Now, this aspect is very important. Every agenda of the wicked consigning any of the pastor. This is so important for us to pray now. Now, you will discover that certain things that are happening to some people in ministry or in life, you discover they are not ordinary. Yes. Uh, imagine a pastor who is prayerful and all that, and things are not just working well. 
and a lot of things are conflicting with his experiences. And it's one day, where did he get it wrong? And he checked his life, he looked at his life, no sin whatsoever. And then he cannot, he cannot just explain why he's going to some things. And then it's later, maybe God will now reveal to him, and then he will realize that this is a buffeting from Satan. Want to pray? Every buffeting from the devil, trial from Satan, or a temptation from the enemy to bring any of our pastor down. In the name of Jesus Christ, the devil will be totally failed in the life of all our pastors. All, all our pastors, none will fall, none will fail, none will falter. This prayer is important. This is pastor meeting. None will fall, none will fail, none will falter. You will not fall, pastor. You will not fail, pastor. You will not falter, pastor. Pray for yourself. And let's pray for all our pastor. Many of them are not online now, but let's stand in the gap. Many of them, maybe because of the one challenge or the other, or network issue, one thing or the other, they are not able to join. But let's pray for them. They will not fall. The tactics of Satan, the antics of Satan, the plans of Satan to capture any of our pastors, it has failed already in the name of Jesus Christ. The devil will not get them through finance. The devil will not get them through their wife. The devil will not get them through their children. The devil will not get them through the business. The devil will not get them through ministry. The devil will not get them through any means. In the name of Jesus, all our pastors will be vigilant. All our pastors will be watchful. All our pastors will be prayerful. Watchful, vigilant, and sober. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Lord will keep all our pastors, uphold all our pastors, preserve all our pastors, watch over all our pastors, and we shall all finish strong in the name of Jesus Christ. We will not preach and perish. We will not labor lost. We will not labor over soul, and our own soul is lost. We will not minister to people, and yet we are lost forever. We will not be guilty and be busy here and there and be guilty on the final day. Oh, God, help us. We need grace. We need help. We need the assistance of God. The devil will not make a recatchal of our Christian faith. The devil will not make a recatchal of our life. Many of us have started many, many years ago. And God is sustaining all. Let's pray. pray, pray, pray. We will finish well. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Akim is the only one swimming, I guess. We're going to pray. Let's continue. We're going to ask the Lord. We are praying for our pastor now. And I believe that every prayer we have prayed for them, spiritual, physical, social, psychological, and emotional, in all ramification, in all aspects that we have prayed about for them, we believe the Lord has answered, and God will come through for all our pastors and intervene in their lives in Jesus' name. And none mm. of our pastors, none of our pastors will fail, and none of our pastors will falter. The hand of God will sustain every of our pastors. None of us will preach and perish. None of us will pray and perish. None of us will do the work of God and be found condemned or guilty on the final day. We shall do this work. And we will be handsomely rewarded by him in Jesus' name. Now, Amen. One Amen. We are praying for the church at Charlotte. I'd like us to understand something. This online prayer that was established by God's servant, Pastor Matthew, uh, was basically to increase and improve the work that God has and given to his servant for uh, Matthew. And uh, if we are always coming, or if we are always coming down, and we forget the purpose, something was established, they were not doing well. That's why every now and then we're always lamenting, 
that we need to commit charity to God in prayer. Let's read the promise of God for church at charity in Luke. The promise of God, Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Luke chapter 12, verse 32. Fear not, little flock, for it is your father's in good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Now, it is your father good pleasure to give you the kingdom. It is your father good pleasure to expand you, to increase you, and to make sure that you flourish. To commit church and charity to the hand of God. First and foremost, we are praying for the angel of the church at charity. That's the pastor, the leader. We are going to pray that the hand of God will be mighty upon him. The hand of God is so visible, so real, in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, I'd like us to pray. Oh, I want us to pray. And it's good we pray. We pray out. Please, it will look like I'm talking to myself. Let's pray out. Let's talk to God in prayer. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray out. Let's in the name of Jesus, let the hand of the Lord be upon the angel of God. In the name of Jesus, let the hand of the Lord be upon the angel of God. The power of the Lord will be upon you. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh Lord God of heaven, you will make me a bridge. You will make a bridge. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. In 1 Samuel chapter 3, in 1 Samuel chapter 3, I read verse 18 and 19. And Samuel told him every week, and he, nothing from him. And he said, it is the Lord. Let him do whatever cement is. Cement mm. him go. Sing. And Samuel go. And Samuel go. God's servant will go. And Samuel Amen. go. Will go. We want to pray for supernatural growth. That the servant of God will go. Have you realized that the a church cannot go beyond our leadership? Now, if a church is going to be very strong, uh, it's just like when we say a nation falls and rises on leadership. Nigeria is the way it is today, basically because of our leadership. America is the way it is because of our leadership. I am telling you the truth, nothing more. Any nation at all is the way they are because there is nothing you will say. I can prove it. I can tell you either from scripture or contemporaries or history, that a nation rises and falls based and through a leadership. We want to pray that God's servant will go supernaturally. God's servant will go every aspect. God's servant will go. Please, if you are there. God's servant. Amen. 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 Samuel chapter 3, and I'm reading that verse 19. And it go, and the Lord was with him. The Lord will be with God's servant. And the Lord was Amen. with him. Be with God's servant. Hey, if you understand that statement, and the Lord was with him, and the Lord was with him, and the Lord was with him, and the Lord was with him. Want to pray? God's hand will be visible. I read Genesis chapter mm -hmm. 20. I'm coming back to 1 Samuel. Genesis 28, verse 15. Please, Pastor Matthew, these are promises of God for you. 
and you need to grab and you need to lay hold and remind God. In Genesis 28 and verse 15, and behold, I am with thee. Amen. Amen. And behold, I am with thee. Amen. Amen. And behold, I am with thee. And we keep thee in all places without that boy. And we bring thee again into this land. For I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee all. May this scripture be a reality That's upon us. Scripture be a reality upon him. God said, I, will, I am with thee. And we keep thee in all places where thou goest. As a travel far and near, as a drive here and there, accident will be far from him. God will be with him. And God will keep him. And God will uphold him. And God will preserve him. His life will not be cut short. Terminal disease will not claim his life. He will not die of anything terminal. In the name of Jesus, God said in this scripture, I will not leave thee until I have done all. That is, until he is walking on air, he cannot leave. Until he is through with his assignment, he cannot leave. Shall we pray? Oh God, your protection will be upon you. Oh God, in Jewish kingdom, God of heaven, until he is through his assignment, he cannot leave you. We protect him, we will keep him. In the mighty prayer, he never sleeps, he never slumbers. Almighty God, I pray your protection, your power will be with him. In the name of Jesus, you cover him under the blood of Jesus. You cover him under the blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. In first time, First Samuel chapter 3, verse 19. And did not, did let none of his work fall to the ground. I love this part. I love this statement. What happened here is this. When Samuel pray, his prayers are usually answered. When he make a declaration, the declaration from God did not let his word to fall to the ground. In the life of Prophet Samuel, exactly what God will do in the life of Pastor Matthew. Exactly mm -hmm. what And did let none of his words to fall to the ground. When he prays for the member, God will establish it. When he prays for people online, God will establish it. When he prays for mm -hmm. people, when he prays the word, God will establish it. God will mm -hmm. honor his the prayer. God will honor his preaching. That's a prayer. God will honor his ministration. That's a prayer. God will honor his declaration. That's a prayer. God will God honor his prayer. Please pray for him. Mm -hmm. You honor his prayer. Oh God, you honor his prayer. Jesus, oh my God, you will honor his prayer in Jesus' name. Oh, mighty God, you honor his prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, you are establishing in the name of Jesus. You overcame the blood of Jesus. You will overcome in the mighty name of Jesus. You will be an overcomer in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Please, never you think we are praying too much for him. Actually, he needs plenty of prayer. Maybe I should tell us a little. Uh, when you hear the church at Charlotte, there are no workers per se in that church. So the God's God does a lot of work. He, aside the online work, there are offline work he does. And sometimes, if you are his friend on Facebook, as I am, you will see sometimes some of those things going places to places. Dropping even food, dropping this, coupled with his secular world. He has so much he's doing. But let's read this scripture. And so he needs plenty of prayer, plenty of it. In Psalm 125, verse 3. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. For the rod mm -hmm. of the wicked, want to pray. The rod of the wicked will not rest upon Pastor Matthew. The rod of the, of the evil people will not rest upon him. He's a righteous man. That's the Bible. He's God's servant. The devil will not get him. 
enemy will not shoot arrow at me. Please pray. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, you are going to deal with him. We are covering under the blood of Jesus. Covering under the blood of Jesus. No more oppression on the Jesus to prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus, Almighty God, I pray you with him. Pray you with him. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. I hope we are praying. Please let me be sure that we are praying. Please, any prayer point I drop, I will not be staying long on the prayer point. But please just pray. If it's one minute, pray. 30 seconds, pray. And as we pray, the Lord will hear us in Jesus' name. Lastly, we want to we go to another prayer session. Lastly, we want to pray for him and then we want to pray for him. And pray for the when we after this prayer, pray for the church, the members. Now I want to pray for him. Whatever trap the devil will set for him to fall into sin. If you read Zechariah chapter 3, what will happen to that high priest, that scripture? He, he was putting on a, a filthy garment. Filthy garment will not be found in the life of Pastor Matthew. In the book mm -hmm. of Solomon. In Sons of Solomon, in chapter 9, and we're told in verse. Uh, so it's not Sons of Solomon, the Ecclesiastes chapter 9. Let me check it. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 8. Yes. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 8. Let thy garment be always white, and thy head lack no ointment. That's the portion of all our pastors of Pastor Matthew. His garment will always be white. There will be no entrance, access point for the devil. Let's pray. There will be no access point. You know what the devil does? If the devil wants to bring a man down, he looks for access points and he uses the weak point of that person. If that person weak point is anger, he can use that. If that person weak point is women, he can use that. If that person weak point is bitterness or hatred, he can use that. The devil uses weak point as an access point to get people, servant of God, but they will not get Pastor Matthew. In the name mm -hmm. of Jesus, his garment will always be white. His garment will always be white. In that day, in the night, they will not get him. In that day, in the night, they will not get any of our pastors. Shall we pray? In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray that will not get him. Almighty God, you cover him under the blood of Jesus. Almighty God, I pray you protect him. Almighty God, I pray you uphold him by your mighty power. In the mighty name of Jesus, O Lord God of heaven, scatter all the plans of the evil man, scatter all the plans of the devil. For this is the Son of God. We pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16. I read five. Verse 4 and verse 5. And I to the city. They deliver the decree for them to kill that. Oh, in the faith and increase in number. So, what the church the church are challenged in the faith, the church are challenging the members will the faith. And there will be numerical and spiritual growth. Shall we pray? Lord, there will be numerical and spiritual growth. The church is challenging. Almighty God, there is going to be in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Almighty God, thy Son, that will arise in your mighty power and sustain the church. He will see the church. Almighty God will see the church. Bow down in the mighty church. In the name of Jesus, O oh God, our Father, may there be spoken oh numerical goods, spiritual goods. O oh God, that the glory of your name in the name of Jesus, the Father. Christ the church. Amen. 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 The third session of our prayer tonight, the session number one was focused on our pastors, and then that was an intercession. The second prayer was for Matthew and the church. The third section now, we are praying for GCK. The GTK is going to Pastor Matthew hometown this time. And that's Ogomo Shore. And uh, I am sure that Pastor is preparing and probably telling some of his people in Nigeria here to reach out to them so that they can attend the program. And I'm also very sure that it's happening that the program is going to his very hometown this time. But then we want to pray the GCK time around. All the sinners that we have in various parts of the world at the Alpha location and every other state and every other state, the hand of God. The Shall we pray? Oh God, let your hand be mighty upon the man of me. O God, sanctify the application. Miracles. Father, we pray oh, that this oh, Father Global could say that the oh, Obama show will be the best ever in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, I pray that in all ramifications, the power will be to save all the present to him. All the present to him. Oh Lord, we pray in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Almighty oh, Father, I pray, Lord, that you will visit us, O oh God, afresh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, I the glory of the Lord is there in the mighty name of Jesus. Let the Spirit of the Lord, let the Spirit of the Lord, let the Spirit of the Lord, Visit mm -hmm. us, O oh God. Visit us, O oh God. With Amen. 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 One of the things affecting us um, or affecting people's life, and one of the things you must never allow in, in your life as a person is familiarity, especially Toto as a mentor. Who abuse assay and they abuse religion. And there are many people that do not know that relationship is the major currency that can take them to any level in life. And so they abuse relationship or they abuse assets. Now, if you if you know the reason why some person, I, I remember those days when I was still in Lagos, they would say, okay. We are going to Bagada, the old Bagada anyway, the old one, not the new one. I've only entered the new one once. The old one, as, a, as somebody on that old year back group then. And then we'll be going for combined service. And then we'll go. But you will discover that many of us, many, many, because the year GSF, we, uh, every month, 
We go to Bagada, we see him on the altar, physically see me, see you, see him, Tapita, and all that. Sometimes some people don't take those things to work. So, you know, they are seeing him, they are hearing him every now and then. And so people far away, they are like, those of you in Lagos, you are enjoying, you hear GS directly, you see him directly. There was a time a church invited GS. I have listened to that message. Uh, that's a dunami. Now, if you can't, the miracles were so much that if you see the miracle, eh, if you if you can check it, it's online there, it's online. Now, familiarity is an issue that is affecting, it's not only in the GS case, even in this prayer meeting, for example, now. I will know because, okay, because I'm living prayer alongside Pastor Ali, alongside the uh pastor pastor ali has been my he was my leader many many years ago i was a boss interpreting for him for even morning cry and even evening cry sometimes many many i was still very young many many years ago now if i am not careful or maybe because now we now live prayer together in a meeting and all that that familiarity can only that is exactly what i have told so that's what is doing some people miracle. It's not demon. It's not witches and wizards. They are too familiar with men of God, familiar with leaders, that they do not believe even in the prayer anymore. We were going to pray. Have you realized when GS went to Cameroon? Do you remember when he went to Ghana? Do you remember when he went to Togo? A, a, a part of Taraba and some other few states. Fantastic, fantastic thing. Some states, I cannot tell. Not so. Be familiar with the man of God. Believe everything we say. We are going to pray that God will cure the church from the cancer of familiarity. Cancer is a cancer. That is why many don't believe their district pastor, but their district pastor and they will be healed. I am telling you the truth. There are those in the local uh, I want to see you. There is a district coordinator. They will not believe you. They say, good pastor, they will not want to see him. It's a GS, it's a GS, it's a GS, it's a GS, it's a GS. That is the issue. Too much unbelief. Too much faithlessness. God will cure us from that. In this GCK, there will be faith. There will be healing. There will be deliverance. There will be emancipation. Shall we pray? Lord, in this coming GCK, there will be there will be divine touch in the name of Jesus. The glory of the Lord will descend. The power of the Lord will descend in the name of Jesus. Your glory, your glory will show forth in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh Lord God of heaven and right, and this is also God. Oh Lord God of heaven and right. And this is the church of God. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gate of hell shall be prevailed again. I pray the gate of hell will not prevail against the church of God. Amen. Pastor, oh Lord, you will visit us in the In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, but I, I always be surprised. Many times when I uh, invite people, tell people that they should join the prayer meeting, I have a sister in the Canada, and whenever we are on prayer, it's like I want him to join. Because I want him to know the power that is going on on this prayer online. If I tell you that I, I don't have any other power. I know many things God has been doing. My life, physically, financially, materially. But one thing I know, I don't miss any of this prayer. If you have been taking away. There's no way I go, there's no way I am. And many ladies prayers meeting, if any one of them is coming or forget it. Uh, because I know the power that is there. And then for many people, that is very dedicated and they don't miss it especially our leader you know when we are talking you know the testimony we are sharing uh, uh, thousands of uh have been falling by the right side another thousands by the left side we always just hearing it 
say we only just say two. We have never been the particular. And even the one we do the the we we are by the devil try us as a leader. All of you, you know how God has always been our power. One thing I want I want us to pray about before I call any of our brother. I don't know the other church is going to take any of us today. Uh, let me see if we have any member. I see one with human being. Oh, and there's nobody. We we pray for all our pastors as they are leading on all our prayer meetings. The power of this is how it will be, and it will be like that. The power that God will put into their tongue. That by the time they say, Yes, the Lord says from the Bible, and that says the sort of that has found on that Bible to say, This is your bro- this brother you are free. That all this sister you are free. All your this brother, your time of miracle is at And at this particular time, that this particular time, they are saying this. That by the power and the blood of Jesus, that God will empower all our pastors. With the divine power of your ever in Jesus' name. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Call our pastor from the leader that lead today. That when they want to lead, people will be running. People will be saying, Oh, it's pastor, you're with us to lead today. And one God will lead me. That's why my pastor, our leader, why is God to lead? That people will be running. I know it is my pastor, our leader, God to lead today. I must not miss that prayer. I pray for Whatever they open, whatever they 
God will work in our life. There are people that have received the word, and the word worked in their life. The word worked in their soul. The word worked in them. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith to God's word is spread abroad. So that we need not to think anything. We say the working of the word in the life of the hearers here, they were transformed. We want to ask the Lord, starting from the side of the scripture, through songs, through the choir ministration, to the message by the man of God, we want the word of God to work redemption. The word of God will have the work of redemption in our life. The word of God will have the work of regeneration in our life. Bringing sinners to the Lord, bringing backsliders back to the Lord, that the word of God will work the work of regeneration. The word of God will work the work of transformation. The word of God will bring regeneration to all that are not saved, resulting in the work of repentance. We want to ask the Lord that as we hear his word this morning, as we listen to his word this morning, as we are taught his word this morning, the work of righteousness that the world does in our heart, in our life, in our being, the word of God will work the work of righteousness. The work of holiness in the life of the believer will be accomplished through the world, the wonders of the world. We want to experience this morning the wonder of the word of God. The word of God does wonder. The word of God will bring the wonder of holistic transformation. Holistic transformation. We will not come here and live here the way we have come. We have come to meet with the man of God. We have come to meet with the Lord. And the Lord will be speaking to us through the man of God. We want the wonders of the world bringing holistic transformation into our life, making us to have the experience of transfiguration, that we have come here, we are living here better than we came. We are living here more refreshed than we came. As the word of God goes forth, as the word of God comes to us, we will experience the wonder of his touch. Through the word of God, there will be renewal. Through the word of God, there will be revival. Through the word of God, there will be strength in our lives, spiritually. There will be strength in all. Just the touch, or the second touch, in the life of Daniel, that gave him strength, that the touch through the word of God will come into our life, the waning in our spirit, the tiredness in us, the, 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 the things that ought not to be that are there, that have made us not to be as strong as we ought to be, the thought of his word, the wonder of his thought, will bring strength into our life. The wonder of the word will take us and lead us to higher relationship. Higher relationship in prayer, higher relationship in obedience to the word of God, higher relationship in submission to the word of God, higher relationship in faith in the word of God. The wonder of the world will lead us to higher relationship, higher consecration. Higher commitment, higher holiness, higher in holy living, higher in service. Let's commit ourselves to God and say, Lord, the touch of your word in my soul this morning. The touch of your word in my spirit this morning. The touch of your word in my life this morning. I want to experience the wonder of the world. As the word comes, the wonder of transformation that takes place in the soul, the soul being reconciled, being drawn closer to God, that wonder will take place. The wonder we need, the